All right, guys. Um, so uh, in year two, in year two, um, as far as I have seen, gene expression, like there's you know a, a lot of stuff to do with inheritance, a lot of stuff to do with genetic manipulation. We really get kind of a bit more heavy with the DNA uh, stuff in year two biology. Okay, so what we will do is we'll start looking at gene expression, this fundamental concept of biology. It's mostly year one stuff actually, but I think very, very important to go over again in year two. Okay, so it's this fundamental idea of gene expression because it relates to the idea of mutation, it relates to the idea of gene regulation, and it is going to be related to the idea of inheritance, right? The, uh, the pattern of inheritance of alleles and how they uh, impact on phenotypes of organisms, variation within a population, okay? And also, it's important to understand this even when we go into genetic manipulation, right? Gene, uh, gene technology, things like that. Okay, so as a kind of basic principle that's kind of essential to all those concepts, let's talk about what gene expression means. Okay, let's remind ourselves that in the cell, okay, we have a nucleus. And in that nucleus, we've got lots of DNA. Now that DNA is actually in the form of chromosomes, and those chromosomes are actually, uh, they might not always be together, but they are in homologous pairs, okay? Um, remember that one of the pairs came from mother, you know, in the, in the egg, and the other chromosome, homologous chromosome, same genes, though possibly different alleles, different versions of genes, the homologous chromosome contribution came from father in the sperm. Okay, and then each chromosome, each chromosome, remember, remember, each chromosome has many genes. So each section, each little section of that chromosome can correspond to a gene and, and that gene is responsible for a particular part of the behavior of yourself as, as the organism. Okay, um, structurally, functionally, etc. Okay, so of the pair of chromosomes, we're just looking at one for now. Uh, but remember that the kind of similar story will be happening with the other one as well. And now, if we look more closely at that chromosome, we will see that it is a DNA double helix, okay, with base pairing, and, and it's the sequence of that, those bases that we're really, really interested in, that's got, you know, the function of DNA uh, at its... Uh, at its root, and then, you know, if we look even closer, we will see, you know, a little section of that DNA. Okay, so let's just make up a sequence. There's no use in, there's my eraser. Okay, so let's just make up a sequence. G, T, C, A, G, C, T, T, G, C, 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 G, C, A, T, A, G. Okay, now what will happen, remember? So that's, let's just say that this corresponds to a gene okay and that gene controls some important aspect of cellular behavior okay 
Um, and so we have a g. And maybe it's just that, there to there. Yeah. And so we're looking at a stretch of DNA. Now what's going to happen is, remember RNA polymerase is going to come along. Okay, RNA polymerase is going to come along and it's going to cause this section of a gene to unwind. Yeah, so let's just draw that in there. Okay, RNA polymerase is going to come along. It's going to bind. RNA polymerase, the enzyme is going to come along. It's going to bind um, and it's going to cause unwinding of the gene. But the main point is, or this section of, of of the DNA, but the main section is it's going to copy that particular sequence into an RNA molecule. Okay, so let's continue. So it's going to synthesize an RNA strand. So if I just remove it for a second, actually, I'll just change the color. Okay, um, so for, against the G, it will put a C. Oh, I can't see that. Not see that. Uh, C, G, it will put a C, T, it will put A, remember, uh, C, it will put a G, against the A, it would put a T, but remember, RNA doesn't have any T's, so it will put a U, C, G, A, A, C, G, 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 C, G, A would be T, no T goes to U, T, A, U, C. Okay, and then this mRNA would detach and the DNA would rewind again. And so we'd get C, A, G, U, C, G, A, C, G, 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 C, G, U, a, C. So we'd get a complementary sequence uh, against one of the DNA strands. We'd get a complementary uh, molecule of RNA made. Yeah, the RNA nucleotides would line up against those unpaired DNA bases. RNA polymerase would move along. It would join those RNA nucleotides up um, to connect them together forming phosphodiester bonds, and, and once it reaches the end of the gene, the RNA molecule comes away, the DNA bases base pair again with the complementary base pairing, and it rewinds back up into the double helix, and the mRNA molecule then floats away um, and moves out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm through the nuclear pore, where it will um, encounter a ribosome, okay? So this is happening in the nucleus, and for like these three bases, these three bases right here in the DNA, those th these sequences of three bases, these are called triplets. Okay, triplets. However, those corresponding three bases in the mRNA, they are called codons. So these are our codons. Okay, now those codons are going to be read by the ribosome, so the ribosome will attach. Oop. The ribosome will attach, okay, and when the ribosome attaches, tRNAs will come along, and according to the codon being read on the mRNA, only a specific tRNA will be able to come in. So if I change color again, Right, so you've got lots of different tRNAs, each with their own unique amino acid, but only the tRNA with that's complementary to CAG will be able to come in. And the amino acid that it brings will be added to the chain in the ribosome. Then it goes away. Hope this works. It would go away, and then the next 
tRNA would come in, bring its amino acid to which the previous one would get joined, and then it goes away. Okay? So the idea of the complementary uh, base pairing between the tRNA and the mRNA codon is important because it allows specific amino acids to be brought into the ribosome for the ribosome. Remember, ribosome's job is to join amino acids together to form the polypeptide. And so, depending on the codons, specific amino acids are brought in. So, it is the genetic code uh, that you can use to determine which codon corresponds so codons correspond to a particular amino acid based on the nature of the genetic code. Now remember the, the genetic code is um, specific, okay? Specific codons result in specific amino acids being added to the chain of amino uh, or, or to the polypeptide, yeah? So because of that specific nature, however, yes, remember, uh, different codons can code for the, for the same amino acid, so that is all to do with the degenerate nature of the code, okay? Um, but remember that um, it's ev every three bases corresponds to a specific amino acid, so by the time you get to the end of that mRNA, according to our very basic sequence here, we'll have CAG, so CAG always results in CAG results in glutamine, right? So the amino acid glutamine. UCG results in a tRNA, which is which brings UCG always brings serine, and AAC always brings asparagine. I'm gonna say ASN. If I'm not mistaken, uh, GGG always gives us glycine. Okay, so what I'm getting across is that according to the codons, according to the C, according to which codons you have in the mRNA, particular amino acids get put in a particular order uh, together by the ribosome to make the polypeptide. CGU, C, G. U gives us arginine, lucky, uh, and U A U C A U C gives us isoleucine. Okay. Anyway, at the end you'd have a stop code on telling the ribosome to stop there. Okay. And that's our polypeptide, right? That would be our polypeptide. The sequence of those amino acids would be our primary sequence or primary structure and because of that primary structure and because of the side chain specific side chains that these amino acids have remember the structure of an amino acid consists of side chain specific to that particular amino acid and based on the properties of those side chains that specific primary structure that specific sequence of amino acids would always give you a very specific tertiary structure because those amino acids with R groups of particular properties, be it hydrophobic, charged, positive charge, negative charge, um, polar, be because those amino acids are in particular places, in positions in the polypeptide chain, they always fold up into um, a particular shape with very specific R group interactions. And because they're in that particular tertiary structure, they have a particular shape. And because they have a particular shape, shape is related to function. Okay? So, and essentially, when that protein starts to work, it only works because it has a particular shape. It only has that particular shape because it's got a very specific sequence of amino acids. It's only got that specific sequence of amino acids because 
the ribosome was reading the specific sequence of codons in the mRNA. And it's only got those particular codons because they were copied from the specific sequence of bases in the DNA in the gene. Okay? And there we have it. So that particular gene results in this particular function now that we've made the protein from it. And at this point, when that protein functions and it starts to do stuff in the cell and it starts to, and that cell's function starts to contribute to the tissue, to the organ, to the overall organism, at that point, guys, we say that that gene has been expressed. Okay? And there we have that, guys. Uh, that's gene expression. And so next, uh, I guess the, 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 the next uh, discussion that we have around this would be about mutations. So I hope that's been, um, I'm not even going to say interesting. I'm not even going to say um, uh, exciting. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hope that it has been bearable. Okay, guys? Um, yeah.